Hello and welcome to Model Railroading for Dummies, the how-to show for model railroading dummies just like me. Now today we are going to be working on installing uh, this Piggly Wiggly store from Menards. Yeah. So I'll turn the lights on here. So yeah, when they announced that they were coming out with this, I was really, really excited. Because our family has a little bit of history with the Piggly Wiggly store. Back when my dad and two uncles were kids, you know, my grandpa would take hogs down to Madison to sell them. And for a treat after they'd sell the hogs, they'd stop at Piggly Wiggly. And grandpa usually got to pick the treat. And he picked orange slices. You know, that sort of, that candy called orange slices because he really liked orange slices and so they're driving back home from Madison and he handed the orange slices to my uncle Paul he said oh I hate orange slices and he tossed them out the window <laughs> yeah my grandpa was completely flabbergasted at that after that they never handed uncle Paul orange slices. So, because of that, I just had to install it in my layout. And I had a spot right here where I where I could do it. I was thinking I'm putting like a DQ or something like that there, but with, with a Piggly Wiggly, it's like, okay, Piggly Wiggly, that's where, it's go that's where it's going. So, without any further ado, let's go down to the layout over here and prep it for installation. Okay, here we are at the layout. Now this is the area here where I'm planning on putting my Piggly Wiggly. Now with these um, Menards type kits, there are two ways you can line them up. It, it, you, it they got a plug-in right here. It's got to be this sort of plug-in, and they got one on the bottom here. Now for display only, you know, around the Christmas tree or something like that, which some of the which I'm sure some people use these for. The one in the back is perfectly fine. However, on a regular model railroad, you're going to want to light it up on the bottom. Use this one. And probably hide this here. So what we're going to want to have to do is have to drill a hole in the layout so that you can plug this in. So, first step really will be to find exactly where we want this. Now, if you notice, there are truck doors back here where trucks would back up and fill up the grocery store. There, I do not see where I could do that. I'd have to put the, because if you put it this way, it hangs over the layout. So it has to be this way. And I, yeah, I could do it right up to the edge, but I kind of want it so that I have a bit of a parking lot here. So, and not only that, back here, no one is going to be able to see this, really. And even when you look down here, you really cannot see the, the sticker doors. So, in that sense, I'm just going to leave it to the front. And so, we're going to want to make... a have a little room here for cars so I'm thinking about right here would be good to give me the most space here I got a couple cars here one of these I got at the trains of Christmas a Volkswagen bug I, I love these cars it I I'm a big fan of Disney's the love bug so I saw Volkswagen bugs. I was like, okay, I get it. There's gonna, I have a feeling there's gonna be quite a few Volkswagen bugs that I'll own on, for my layouts, just because I like them. So, if this, this is the place where I'm gonna put. It. Now, another option would be to have it at an angle, like where the road is under the camera and have it at the same angle. Now that is an option, but I, th 
I, I don't like the way it looks. It's kind of hiding because most people would view it from the opposite view of the camera. And then the stickers on the back will start to show. And they're really not all that realistic being stickers. Other than that, I really like this kit. Or, not kit. Uh, finished model, more like. So I think the best view is to have it fit 90 degrees, you know, flush with the edge of the layout. I think that will make it look the best. So, having decided that, just need to choose the exact spot where, where I want to put this and then just take a marker or a pencil or something and just get the general idea where this is going to go. Then See, now what we need to do is come find, get a hole for the, where the pigtail thing is going to come out. So I'm just going to cut a general hole about the size I want, about where it is, just, just sort of eyeballing it. Okay. I got that and then just take a hobby knife or some other knife and cut through the foam. Okay, now let's see if we can... I have a strange feeling that there's going to be a bead of glue right under this Something shifted. I have a feeling there's going to be a bead of glue right under her, um, this bit of foam. Keeping it glued down. It'd just be my luck. I'm just going to cut it into squares. See if I can get it. See if I can just. There. Yeah. Might want to. Might want a trash can handy for cutting up foam. Or a vacuum cleaner. Or probably both. There, that snapped off nicely. Oh, yes, there wasn't a bead of glue, just the foam holding sturdy. There was a little bit right in the corner, but not, not enough to stop it. Okay, now I'm going to get the vacuum cleaner and vacuum up these little foam bits. Okay. Got a little piece, couple pieces stuck. There. Okay, now we got this in. Now we need to have the build the basically the retaining walls for pouring the cement. Because once again, I'm going to be using real cement so I can get uh, not so that I can have a nice cement colored parking lot. And not only that, it'll match good with the row, which is right under the camera. I'm going to be using this cork type stuff. Don't ask me where I got it because um, it, it's 
my mom was throwing it away after it been in the house for I don't know how many years. It was like mono rarity material. So I swiped it. So I'm just gonna cut a rough bit off. Yeah, I'll just rip it off. So I don't need anything extremely precise. Kind of want this straight edge here. Okay, so let's see. Probably need to get a straight edge here, or we can cut this into a couple of different pieces because they will not need it to be that wide. So just take our hobby knife and cut the cork and not your fingers preferably there so let's see we'll put this right here I think this piece here will work good for the back because it's thinner So I'm going to need a little bit more. This one I just did a jagged edge. So I'll just go down the middle and cut a nice straight edge. Okay, I think that's exactly what we need. So I'm going to cut this at a bit of an angle for that other piece. There. Yeah, I have a nice angle there. Okay, then this piece here, let's cut the ends off. These pieces can fit together nicely. Okay. I think this angle here needs to be a little bit. In order to get a nice straight edge. There, that's a lot better. Okay, now we're going to need to glue and pin this down. So the glue I'm going to use is some Elmer's wood glue. So that way it's, it's a little bit sturdier than, a little bit hardier than regular, or um, white glue and not only that when you go and wet things down well, for other scenery work and stuff it's not going to perfect guess to me about about the right amount of glue there now well, that holds up pretty good. Now you can either pin this down or put books on it. Whichever you prefer. Now this piece here, I'm going to just do, try and have a fairly thin bit of glue. So I can trim this off a bit. Just right along the straight edge there. Okay, and I need to trim the trim this. I forgot to trim this. Just 
squish it down. Okay, now for this one here. Now for this last piece. And I did it all the way to the end. Oh well. Okay. Okay, now I just need to pin this down or put books on it or something. Then we'll come back and then pour the cement. Okay, I got these all glued on. Also, I added some scraps here right where the building's going to stand. So that way, it, I have it nice and level where the building's going to sit. So that way there isn't any dips and stuff and where the building's floating and stuff so and one thing I did is I made sure that it would that this rectangular shape here is smaller than the area of the building itself that's where that mark previously came in handy and now I can use this as a guide so at least around here the cement is nice and level it can have little dips and stuff over here but I can let that slide Okay, now we need to drill a hole in the plywood. I got a 3 8 bit here, because it just so happens to be the largest bit I have in the house with me. So, I think it's right about the right size. If not, I can always enlarge it. No problem. Now, we need to tape the outside here to protect it and also to provide a little bit of a dam for the cement. Also, I'm adding a little some paper here, some scrap paper along the edges so that you don't get the fascia dirty. Okay, so that's that. Now we're going to pour on the cement. I got the stuff mixed up. Now it's just a matter of getting it on. And of course I find a little clod. You want to make sure that you don't have clods if at all possible. Use a strip. Use a wire strainer or something like that to make sure that it's, if there's any clods in the cement, you don't want them in here. Found one.
Okay, we got this amount of cement on we uh, want now. Now we gotta smooth it out because it looks bad. <laughs> I got a cup of water here. Definitely don't want a cup that you ever want to drink out of. So I'm gonna wet the spatula here. So hopefully, if I don't hit a little clod or something. It can help to smooth everything out. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now we're gonna let this dry. I miss another spot. Okay, now that looks pretty good. For what the third time? We're gonna let this dry and then we can install the building next. Although chances are I'm gonna yeah, we'll probably install the building next, then I'll do, paint some lines for parking spaces. So, see you then. Okay, the cement is now all nicely dried. And it broke away a little bit on the edge here, but I can always try and touch that up later. Or, or at the very least, paint it a little bit to make it look a little better. Also, I had to drill a larger hole. A 3 8 is not big enough for this. You know, you need a half inch. So I had to go out and get a half inch bit. So it would work. 
So, what we're going to do is we're going to glue this down with Elmer's white glue. So what we're going to do is, this base here, we're just going to have a bead of glue all along the edge. There. Now, when it comes time for if this layout has to be taken take it down or whatever, or make a new one or something, then I can <clears throat> just remove the building very easily, just take a, a spatula or something and scrape it off, or if absolutely need be, you could just squirt some water in there to loosen it up. <clears throat> so that way it, it's going to be solid enough to hold it in place, but yet it'll be removable enough so that you can remove it. So first thing we're going to do is want to make I want to make sure this gets pushed in. Just reach under, pull it in, and then we'll push the building into place. Just there we go is all nicely in place. So we'll have to let this dry before we can go to like painting the cement here and having the parking lanes. Now our next step I think will be to complete the scenery around this area. Okay that is going to be it for today. I'm running short of time to get this done and uploaded for tomorrow. So. We're going to do the rest of the stuff, uh, putting the, the stripes on for the parking lot, and also adding the details around the parking lot itself. We'll do that for part two of the series. It doesn't look too bad. It's, it's a little uneven. There is still a little bit of gas. It's the, the cement's a little uneven. The cement is a little uneven. There, that's the right word. But overall, it, it's not too bad. And I think I should be able to hide it Provided that this is a well-visited store, a.k.a. put some cars in front there, kind of hiding the fact that the building is floating a little bit in places. So, if you like this video, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. And if you do subscribe, make sure to hit the little bell icon so you can receive notifications when I release new content. So until next time, keep working on your model railroads, keep having fun, and until next time, Keep your trains on the tracks.